If you're getting ready to come into Medicare, whether you're turning 65 or you're about to retire, you certainly know by now there's a lot of things you need to understand. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go through the Medicare and You Guidebook 2020 with all the questions and answers. This is the everything book for Medicare. So I'm going to go through it page by page, help you understand exactly what you need to know, try and make it as easy as possible. Stay tuned. Medicare on video. Medicare on video. Okay, so you're about to come into Medicare, so likely you're either turning 65 or you're already past 65 and you're going to retire from your job and, and end your group health insurance, so you need to start your Medicare. And there's a lot of things to understand, and this is where it gets very confusing. So I'm going to try and make it as easy as possible. I'm Keith Armbrecht founder of Medicare on Video, and I help people across the country make the right Medicare choices, and I can absolutely help you as well. And the great thing about what I do is we do everything virtually. So everything's online. We don't have to meet together. We can get everything figured out very easily, put all the pieces in the right places, and it also doesn't cost anything to allow me to help you. So it makes a great start to your Medicare to make, make yourself comfortable that you get it right and that's absolutely what we want to do so if you are turning 65 you likely received this book in the mail at some point recently the medicare and you guidebook 2020 this is kind of the know-it-all everything of medicare so something we want to understand what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to go through it kind of page by page and explain most of it to you so hopefully that'll make it easier for you to understand so this video is going to be a little bit longer but i'm going to pretty much cover all the bases. Now, first thing we need to do is make sure that you have a copy of it. So if you don't have a copy of it, we can get you a copy right now. And it's available on my website. I'll show you how to get there. I also have this in Spanish. If you'd like to have it in Spanish, you're welcome to download that as well. But if you visit MedicareOnVideo.com, you simply go right here to the Resource Center. And when you hover over it, it's going to drop down. And you're looking for guides and forms. And one thing about my website is I have a tremendous amount of information here, stuff that you will need now and you will need in the future. So everything from videos on everything Medicare to all the guides, all the forms, everything that you need right here. So make sure you kind of remember how to get back to MedicareOnVideo.com and the Resource Center. That's where I keep everything. So if you go into Guides and Forms, you'll see right here is the Medicare and You 2020 guide. If you click on it, it's gonna download onto your computer or your iPad, and you can keep it there from now until whenever you need it, or you can print it out. It is, I think, 120 pages, so you may not wanna print it out, but it's great to have on your computer. You can search through it very easily. It makes it pretty simple to do. You can see here also, I've got a lot of other forms and guides and things that you need and if you're retiring i have in here the employer coverage form where if you're past 65 you need your employer to fill this out before you can get your part b started so make sure you download that employer form while you're here as well so hopefully we've got your medicare and you guidebook 2020 and again i'm gonna go through it i'm not going to go through every single item in it but i'm gonna go through the important stuff and i'll tell you what i think about it how i find that it works and i've been doing this for a number of years so it gives you a pretty good idea on things you need to do and when you need to do them so the first thing they want to tell you is they are now e-capable so they they make they're making everything available electronically, which is very good, especially these days where we do not want to have to deal person to person with someone to get everything taken care of. So we can do everything pretty much online. And that's, again, the beauty about what I do, and I've already been doing it for a number of years, where we can easily, without having to physically sign things or mail or scan or any of that stuff, it's super easy to do everything just online. All we have to do is punch a few buttons these days and it, it gets everything in place. So I'll show you exactly how that works. And when we get into the book, this is the table of contents. You can see there's, I think there's actually about 120 pages. Uh, so we're not going to go through every single page, but I'm going I'm to hit the important parts of it and the topics that are important to you as we go through. And I'll tell you exactly how they relate and how they relate to what I do. So first thing we want to talk about is getting started with Medicare. So you need to understand 
on specific dates on when to get started. What it talks about here, kind of the generic dates. So you can see on their calendar, January 1, and the way Medicare works, if, if you've paid attention recently at all, at the end of every year, there's this blitz of advertising for primarily Medicare Advantage plans. And, and with a Medicare Advantage plan, you can change that at the end of each year and without any questions asked. So, and I'll get into the differences between Medicare Advantage versus Original Medicare in just a minute, but these dates kind of relate to that. So, if you were changing at the end of the year, January 1 is when it'll take effect. So, you make your choice ahead of time, and then January 1 it takes effect. Then you have a period from January 1 to March 31 if you decided to go into a Medicare Advantage plan and you figured out it really, really wasn't what you wanted to do, they give you a time that you can get back out of it. So it's really important to understand that because if you don't like it and you want to get out of it and you miss this date, you're locked in for the year. So you absolutely need to understand the dates on when you can make changes. And then October 1, is the time when all the commercials start on TV for this whole thing to run over again year after year. And then you make your choice. And again, this is primarily Medicare Advantage. If you're changing around at the end of the year, you have a period from October 15th to December 7th to make the choice. And then it takes effect January 1. And again, if you miss that date, if you wait till December 8th, you can't do it. So you need to make sure we understand these dates. And again, this is all stuff that I'm super happy to help with. So, you know, whether you fully understand it or whether you just give me a call and let me walk you through it, that's perfectly okay as well. So what are the parts of Medicare? And they've jumbled it up pretty good to make it pretty complicated so we don't really understand, put a whole lot of letters out there and a whole lot of plans and different things. And most people, don't really, not only do they not understand health insurance plans, they don't want to understand health insurance plans. So this is something that is super important because it's going to be with you the rest of your life. So we want to make sure we get it right. So pretty simple. Part A is coverage for stuff that happens in the hospital. So it's for inpatient benefits. So the Part A of Medicare pays for things that happen in the hospital. Part B is the part of Medicare that pays for things that happen outside the hospital, whether it's doctor's visits, outpatient surgery, physical therapy, things like that. So A is in the hospital, B is outside the hospital. Makes it a little bit easier to understand. And then we throw in part D, which is prescription drug coverage. So that can work in a couple of different ways, and I'll get into that a little bit as well. So A in the hospital, B outside the hospital, D for drugs. Pretty easy so far. So when you come into Medicare, you got one really, really big choice to make. And this is a big choice. This is the one you absolutely need to understand. Whether you're going to stay on original Medicare, which is the A and the B, or whether you're going to choose a Medicare Advantage plan. And I'll show you a little bit of the differences here in a minute. And the, the, the main difference here is if you stay with original Medicare, you would have Medicare A, Medicare B, you would likely get a Medicare supplement plan that covers what A and B do not, and you'd likely get a Medicare drug plan. If you go into a Medicare Advantage plan, kind of bundles it all together. And what happens is you choose an insurance carrier that acts primarily as your Medicare. So it kind of takes you away from original Medicare and then puts you into a, a insurance-based Medicare Advantage plan. So important to understand that. I'll show you the differences here in just a minute on how they function. But that is your first really big choice. And it's, it's no secret if you've seen some of my other videos, I am not a big fan of Medicare Advantage. It does absolutely work for people in certain scenarios and can kind of can make things simple. But it can be more complicated when it comes time to use it. And that's, that's where I kind of differ and certainly lean to Medicare Original because it just gives you freedom and flexibility to do the things you want to do with your healthcare choices in the future. So, but that aside, I'm going to show you both and, and make sure you understand so that way you can make an educated decision 
when it comes time. So when we look at original Medicare versus Medicare Advantage, the first difference here is probably the biggest difference. So you can see here with original Medicare, you can go to any doctor, any hospital that takes Medicare anywhere in the United States. So you have no networks, no choices, no primary cares, no restrictions on who you choose. So if you want to go to a certain cardiologist, you pick up the phone and you call that cardiologist. So with a Medicare Advantage plan, it's more of a HMO type environment where you have a network of doctors and a network of doctors or doctors and hospitals where the insurance carrier has put together that network and generally you stay within that network. And sometimes on certainly lower cost plans, you need a referral to go from a primary to a specialist. And, and I can tell you, I've been in health insurance for years and years. That is by far the number one complaint is if you need to go to a specialist, that cardiologist, that you first have to go to a primary care physician and ask permission, get a referral, then make an appointment to go to the cardiologist. And it can just take a tremendous amount of time to do all that, not, not to mention the effort and, and just the hassle to do it all. So that's the biggest difference to me is the freedom and flexibility between making your own choices or having to stay within a framework where someone else is kind of making choices for you. So that's how things work between Medicare Original and Medicare Advantage. Now, when you look at the costs, and it's kind of interesting because it, it certainly seems like Medicare would prefer for you to choose a Medicare Advantage plan. And the reason I would think is because it, it gets you off of Original Medicare, so they don't have to process claims and do things like that. And what they do is they pay a fixed amount per month to a Medicare Advantage plan to kind of take you off of original Medicare. So that's the framework of how it is. Some people wonder how Medicare Advantage plans can be zero premium or things like that. It's because Medicare pays them instead of you having to pay out of pocket. So again, it's a personal choice and I'd be happy to talk through it with you so that whatever choice you make, it's the right one and the one that you're comfortable with. So when you look at cost on original Medicare, you generally have a hospital deductible, a out of hospital small deductible, and then 80-20 coverage, where Medicare pays 80% and you pay 20%. Now, generally, you'll get a Medicare supplement that covers those deductibles and covers that coinsurance. And you'll generally be left with a small deductible, usually the Part B deductible, which is about a less than $200 for the year, and possibly a copay of like $20 when you go to the doctor. And that's it. That's your entire expense for the year is a less than $200 deductible and maybe a copay or maybe even not even a copay. It depends on which Medicare supplement plan you take. When you choose a Medicare Advantage plan, a lot of times premium up of the beginning in the year, you still have to pay your Medicare Part B premium. So that, that costs about $144 base right now. So you still have to pay that on original Medicare or on a Medicare Advantage. And then a Medicare Advantage plan can have zero extra premium or it can have uh, up to a couple hundred dollar monthly premium, depends on which plan you take. So your out of pocket costs can vary with a Medicare Advantage plan. And generally your maximum out of pocket costs for the year can be much higher on a Medicare Advantage plan than it is on Medicare Original. So if you have Medicare Original with a supplement, you're likely less than $300 max out of pocket for the year on, on most any plan, sometimes less than that. On a Medicare Advantage plan, it can be upwards of $6,000 max out of pocket. So it's important to understand that because when you see all the commercials on TV with Medicare Advantage, they're making them super pretty and shiny and they include all sorts of extra stuff and everything is part of the plan, but they don't really talk about the out-of-pocket expense when you go use it. So make sure you understand that and take a look at specifically maximum out-of-pocket because that's the important one to understand. That's what you could possibly be responsible for during the year. So from a coverage standpoint, pretty simple. And, and the wonderful thing about Medicare 
it's actually really good. There's very few spots where it struggles, and, and one of them is on drug coverage. It can be a little complicated on drug coverage, but for regular medical coverage, it's fantastic. And especially on original Medicare, again, you pick your doctor, you pick your specialist, you pick your hospital, you go anywhere you want to go, and if it's medically necessary, is covered by Medicare in almost all cases. So it's like regular health insurance where obviously things that are experimental or elective are not part of medical coverage, but it's, it's super easy. And if you Google Medicare reviews, really with original Medicare, you'll see absolutely nothing negative or, or very, very little negative. Medicare Advantage, you'll see a whole lot of negative. So a lot of, and that's where kind of the choice makes a difference. People get frustrated when they can't make their own choices on their care. So that's really, again, the big difference I feel between the two of them. So something to understand. Another big part to understand down at the bottom where it talks about travel. So original Medicare doesn't really cover outside of the U.S. Medicare Advantage plans don't cover outside of the U.S. However, if you have original Medicare and a supplement, there is coverage for outside of the U.S. And that's important to people that travel, for sure, where they want to have coverage while they travel. You don't have to go and buy a travel insurance policy or things of that nature. So original Medicare with a supplement does have coverage for outside of the U.S. Medicare Advantage plans generally do not have coverage outside the United States. So signing up for Medicare, this is important stuff. You need to do it in the time frame that is laid out. And you can see some people get Part A and Part B automatically. Part A, yes, Part B, not so much. When you would get it automatically is if you chose to take Social Security early. So if you are 62, 63, 64, and you're already on Social Security, then they assume you're not working and you probably don't have group health insurance. So they're gonna automatically start your Medicare Part B when you turn 65. Do not take that for granted. Make absolutely sure if your Medicare Part B needs to start when you turn 65, that it does start because there are ramifications if you miss that target line. Now, if you are about to come into Medicare and you're ready to start your Part B, whether you're retiring or turning 65, I made a URL to make it easy for you to do it. So if you go right here, www.startpartb.com, it's going to take you right to the page on Medicare where you sign up for Medicare Part B. So it's actually on Social Security's website, which again, that'll confuse people right off the bat, where to start your Part B, you have to go to Social Security because everything kind of falls under Social Security. So Medicare is an extension of Social Security. So that's why it's all tied together. Even though Medicare has its own website, medicare.gov, uh, everything starts through Social Security. So just make sure you understand that. And again, give me a call, send me an email. I'll walk you right through it. We'll make it easy. And again, there's no cost to use me the way I get compensated is if you are an original Medicare and you get a Medicare supplement plan, whichever insurance company issues that Medicare supplement plan pays me to be your service agent and to help you now and in the future with anything that comes along and certainly always things that come along. So startpartb.com is where you go to get your Medicare Part B started. So if you're not automatically enrolled, when can you sign up? And again, this is the thing that you need to understand completely. If you're turning 65, you have a seven month window, three months before your birthday month, the month of your birthday month, three months after. And, and don't really pay a whole lot of attention to that. You need to do it the three months before the month of your 65th birthday to have it start on the first of the month of the month that you turn 65. So if you turn 65, on June 15th, your Medicare is gonna start June 1st. It's only different if you're born on the first of the month, then it's gonna start the month before. So if you're born on June 1st, your Medicare is gonna start May 1st. So make absolutely sure, especially if you're born on the first of the month, to understand that you need to do it ahead of time so that you don't miss that date. Because if you miss that date, it just 
complicates everything. And then there are penalties as well, and there's delays and when you can do it. So make sure in that time frame. Same thing if you're going to retire. You usually know your retirement date ahead of time, and there's some extra things we need to do if you're retiring. You need to do that employer coverage form. Do it well ahead of time, three to four months ahead of time. Get it done. Get it off your plate. That way, when it's time to start, it starts. So, should I get Part B? This is also super important. If you are coming into Medicare, yes, you absolutely need Medicare Part B if you are coming into Medicare. If you are going to stay at work on your employer group coverage, you do not want Part B to start because Part B is a trigger. And if you stay on your employer coverage, you may work until you're 67, 69, doesn't really matter, into your 70s. When you come off your employer plan, that's when you want your Part B to start because that makes it just like you're turning 65. You can pick and choose any plan that you want, no questions. So you do not want to start your Part B before you're ready to come into Medicare. So important to understand that. And again, feel free to give me a call and discuss it if you have any concerns with that. There is a little caveat to that, which there always is a caveat, is if you work somewhere with more or less than 20 employees. And man, that, this makes this complicated. If you work somewhere with a small amount of employees and you're gonna work past age 65. So let's look here. How does my other insurance work with Medicare? So if you have retiree insurance, Medicare is gonna pay first. So in other words, Medicare is gonna be primary. You do not need retiree insurance, especially if you pay for it. And it can get really complicated if you are on retiree insurance and then you want to get into Medicare later and you didn't do it when you were first eligible, there can be penalties as well. So when Medicare is primary, that's really what you want to be on, not on your other plan. So keep that in mind. If you're 65 or older, have a group health plan coverage based on or on yours or your spouse's employment and the employer has 20 or more employees. So woo -hoo. So here we have 20 or more employees. Your group health plan pays first. So if you are at work, working past 65, more than 20 employees, 200, 500, 1,000, you work for General Motors, whatever it may be, you, you likely want to stay on that group plan. That's assuming that you are the employee. And what you don't want to do is start your Medicare Part B if you're going to stay on that group plan. Now, a lot of times you have the spouse also on that group plan. And the way most group plans work is the, the employer pays most of the employee's premium, but they do not pay for the spouse's premium. So a lot of times if the spouse is turning 65 of the employee at that large group, it's almost always better for them to come off of that group plan and go into Medicare. It's almost much better coverage and much lower cost. So it makes a lot of sense for that spouse who's not the employee to come off the group plan really regardless when they're turning 65. So again, give me a call. I'll walk you through it. We'll, we'll tell you exactly how that works. So the next one, if you're 65 or older of a group health plan and your employer has fewer than 20 employees, Medicare pays first. So, if you are on, if you work for somebody with less than 20 employees, and that's where it gets great. How do you know? If you, got, if you work somewhere and there's 19 people around you, and how do they count their 1099s and part-timers and things of that nature? It can get really complicated. Uh, but if it is the case that it's less than 20 employees, you want to get into Medicare. So, you want to get off that and get into Medicare. And sometimes the employer might pay your Medicare Part D premium because it's a good idea for them to get you off of their group plan as well. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you're under 65 and have a disability and you're on a group health plan, so this is under 65, I'm not going to get too much into disability coverage. And, and I don't do Medicare disability, but I, I do help with it. So I, I absolutely want to make sure you get what you need. Uh, so I have actually a, a complete website on Medicare disability where we help on that. But, you know, a couple other complicated things here. So that's kind of the first question I'll ask you right now and can absolutely help me. When you're coming into Medicare, are you coming in turning 65 or are you 
past 65, still working and going to retire. So just leave a comment below the video here. You can either say turn in 65 or past 65. So it certainly helps me understand how people are functioning. So just take a second, go right below the video in the comments and put either turn in 65 or past 65 and that'll help me figure out exactly what the majority of folks are doing. But obviously turn in 65 is a big one and we just wanna make sure we get it right no matter which way it goes. So how much does part A cost? So a lot of people wonder, you know, how much does Medicare cost? Some people think it's free and it's not free, but it's not expensive. So I'll show you exactly how it works. Part A for the most part is free. So if you've worked what is considered 40 qualifying quarters during your lifetime, then that's 10 years, then your Part A should be at no cost. If you have not qualified for 40 qualifying quarters in your lifetime, then you can pay up to $458 a month for Part A. So yes, that is expensive if you have not worked. And, and obviously the reason being there is when you're working, you're paying into Medicare. So you've already paid through your lifetime for your Medicare Part A. So no cost to it if you've worked 40 quarters, pretty significant cost if you have not. How about Medicare Part B? So there is a premium to Medicare Part B and it's not really a choice, you have to have it because it covers everything outside the hospital. And so it's a big part of Medicare. And if you don't get it when you're supposed to get it, then there's a penalty on top of it. So make sure you understand when to get it and how to get it, which we just went through. And in 2020, the premium is $144.60. That's for most people. I believe the number is around 75% of the people pay $144.60. Now it is income based. So if you make more than a certain amount of money, you're going to pay more for your Medicare Part B. I have all that on my website in the guides and forms. I also have a video, it's called IRMA, Income Related Monthly adjustment, something like that. So it's called IRMA and it tells you based on your income how much your Part B is going to cost. It can go up to 400 and some dollars a month. So if you're a victim of your own success, then you're going to pay more for your Medicare Part B. So understand that. Down at the bottom, late enrollment penalty for Medicare Part B. Again, if you do not sign up when you're supposed to sign up, it gets complicated and there are delays and then there are penalties. So you wanna make sure you do it in the time that you're supposed to do it. So how can I pay my Medicare Part B premium? I don't usually go over this too much, but what generally happens is if you are on Social Security, so if you're drawing Social Security, they're gonna take it right out of your Social Security check. If you are not drawing Social Security, they're gonna send you a bill. And when they send you a bill, it's gonna be a quarterly bill. So you're gonna pay that three months at a time, that 144 for most people, times three every quarter. So you gotta be prepared for that. It's not a monthly deal. You can also apparently pay by credit card or debit card. So you can go through this here or sign up for Medicare Easy Pay. So that might be a nice thing as well where it would automatically take it out of your checking account. And then I would assume they would do that monthly, which might make it easier to manage as well. So go, you can go through all this in your book, which you've already downloaded from my website. So now we're gonna skip ahead just a few pages. We're now on page 25. Find out if Medicare covers your test, service, or item. And I'm not gonna get too deep into this. Medicare pretty much covers whatever is medically necessary. So we don't have to go in there. There is some very specific information in this book, which you can go through at your leisure and figure out you know, different things, how, but it, again, it's all pretty black and white. It's pretty much Medicare Part B deductible, less than 200 bucks, and then it's 80-20. So, and if you have a Medicare supplement, it's going to pay most of what Medicare doesn't. If you're on Medicare Advantage, then you need to do a little more investigation because they can have their own fees and costs and co-pays and co-insurance and all sorts of things that makes it a little more complicated to understand. So make sure you do that if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan. So Part A covers, again, in the hospital. Part B covers out of the hospital. So again, it's really 
easy. It's, it's not hard. Once you get into it, you'll see. You go give me your Medicare card, give me your Medicare supplement card, and for the most part, it goes the way it's supposed to go. So that's a wonderful thing. This is important. I wanted to point this out because this changed recently, and it's kind of odd, but am I inpatient or outpatient in a hospital? So it is important for you to understand if you go into a hospital, do they classify you as inpatient or outpatient? And why would that be? Really, the main reason is if you are considered inpatient hospital, and when you're done, if you had to go to a skilled nursing facility for rehab, Medicare is going to pay for it. If you're in the hospital and you're classified as outpatient, and when you're done, you need to go to a skilled rehab facility for, our, for physical therapy, Medicare is not going to pay for it. So it's a big, big difference. I had a call a while back from a woman or from the actually kids of a nice lady that had broken her arm, went into the hospital, was in the hospital for three days, and then was discharged to a skilled nursing facility. They had her classified as outpatient. So they ended up having to pay, I think, $300 a day at the skilled nursing facility because it was based on an outpatient admission, if that's even a thing. And it, 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 it's, it's something that Medicare changed, obviously a cost issue. So I, I, I don't understand the reasons behind it, but it's important to understand what it is. So inpatient or outpatient. And you can see here, I was reading through this, you, can, you will get a, a Medicare outpatient observation notice, Moon. So if you go into the hospital, and they are classifying you as outpatient, they have to give you Moon, which is a Medicare outpatient observation notice. So if it ever comes along, just pay attention to what you're getting. If it says Moon, then you know you're outpatient. And that's not all bad. It's only bad if when you come out, you need to go to a skilled nursing facility. So just understand how that works. And then the difference is again, so we understand Medicare functioning. If you're classified as inpatient, it's covered under Part A. If you're classified as outpatient, it's covered under Part B. So it's just important to understand how that all functions. So what does Part B cover? And again, Part B covers the stuff outside the hospital. So doctor's visits, blood work, physical therapy, outpatient surgery, anything outside the hospital is what falls under Part B. So not too complicated to understand that. Traveling when outside of the U.S. Again, there's very little that's covered under Medicare or Medicare Advantage, but a Medicare supplement does cover travel care when you're traveling outside the U.S. So important to understand that as well. Down at the bottom here, welcome to Medicare preventative visit. A lot of people get confused with this as well. When you come into Medicare, and you'll probably get something in the mail from Medicare that says, hey, you're now welcome to a welcome to Medicare preventative visit. This is not a physical. This is basically you going to your doctor and reviewing your medical history. So it's almost like an introduction to the doctor. And I don't know if you'd be changing doctors or not changing doctors. If you go into a Medicare Advantage plan, you probably would be changing doctors. But in regular Medicare, you can likely go to the same doctor you've been going to for however long you've been going to that doctor. And you're entitled to this welcome to Medicare preventative visit. And then yearly, there is a wellness visit and also not a physical. So you don't want to call your doctor and schedule a physical. You want to call your doctor and schedule a yearly wellness visit. And it's, you know, not super far away from a physical. It gives you pretty much a checkup. And it's a good thing to have on a annual basis without a doubt. So what is not covered with Part A and Part B? And again, like regular health insurance, the same stuff is not covered under Medicare as regular health insurance. Most dental care, eye exams, dentures, cosmetic, massage therapy, routine physical exams, uh, acupuncture, hearing aids, long-term care, concierge care. So, you know, some of that is covered with other, with a supplement or there's dental vision hearing plans and things of that nature, but that is not included in Medicare Part A and Part B. Okay, now we're on page 51. How does Medicare work? And this is pretty easy to understand. And, you know, can I get my health care from any doctor other than health care provider? 
<coughs> can I get from any doctor or other healthcare provider or hospital? In most cases, yes. You can go to any doctor, any hospital, anywhere in the country that takes Medicare. And certainly most do. There's a caveat coming up where I'm going to talk about Medicare assignment versus not Medicare assignment. A little different. Are prescription drugs covered? No, not under original Medicare. You need a separate Medicare drug plan that will cover it. And it's not all that complicated, and we absolutely help you get that all figured out. Do I need to get a referral? In most cases, no, you do not. Sometimes if you want to go to a cardiologist, the cardiologist might not see you unless you've gone somewhere ahead of time because they don't want to waste their time, uh, even though they would get paid to waste their time. But they may want you to get kind of looked at ahead of time before you come see them. Should I get a supplement policy? It's a personal decision, but it's a pretty easy one. The biggest drawback and the reason you would get a Medicare supplement policy is with original Medicare, you have the deductibles aren't so bad and 80-20 coverage isn't so bad. So that's pretty good stuff to have 80-20 coverage. The problem is the 20 doesn't stop. So if you have a catastrophic year, that 20% can get extremely high. So that's one of the main reasons to have a Medicare supplement is it gives you a stop on the 20% and keeps your annual out of pocket super low. And again, usually less than a couple few hundred bucks a year for total out of pocket costs for your health insurance in your senior year. So that, that's again, fantastic the way Medicare works. So you can get some things electronically, which again, they're trying to move as much electronic as they possibly can, which is a fantastic thing. And these days we're all pretty well versed electronically. And if you're not, I can get you through it without any real difficulties. It's super easy to do. So let's talk a little bit in the middle of the page here. What is Medicare assignment? Medicare assignment are doctors that agree to take Medicare assignment. If they agree to take Medicare assignment, then they agree to accept what Medicare pays them as payment in full. So there's no additional cost to them. Now there are a few doctors and it's less than 10% I believe that take Medicare, but do not take Medicare assignment. So it's important to understand that if they don't take Medicare assignment, then they have the ability to bill you 15% more than what Medicare pays them, which kind of sounds like a lot, but it's really not that much. You know, it may equate to 15 or $20 on top of what Medicare pays them. I would certainly expect a doctor that does not take assignment to let you know that, uh, but it's a good idea to ask. And a lot of times they don't know when you ask at the front desk. So they might confuse it with Medicare Advantage and say, no, we don't take Medicare assignment. And they're thinking Medicare Advantage. So just something to understand the difference there between assignment and not assignment. So Medicare Advantage plans and other options. What are Medicare Advantage plans? And again, these are plans that are run by insurance companies. So whatever insurance company, and you see them on TV all the time, trying to convince you to come into their Medicare Advantage plan. So obviously they're doing pretty well with their Medicare Advantage plans because they really, really want you to come and be a part of it. And they do sometimes have additional services, but a lot of times the additional services aren't full coverage of the type of stuff they're talking about. So make sure if you're looking at them, for instance, if they offer dental, make sure it's not just preventative dental, make sure it's real dental. And a lot of them talk about dental, but they really only offer cleanings and x-rays and then anything else you're paying for out of pocket. So stuff like that is important to understand. You have to do a much deeper dive into a Medicare Advantage plan than you do with Original Medicare. Med Original Medicare is pretty well black and white, cut and dry, kind of easy to understand what you're looking at. So again, they can offer extra benefits. Uh, they have to follow Medicare rules, but they do have some different out-of-pocket expenses. So make sure you understand your exposure if you're looking into a Medicare Advantage plan. So Medicare Advantage plans allow you to jump in and out at the end of any year. So if you're in one, you want to go to another one. And that's kind of the big problem is people get in them and then they're not happy and they want to get into something else. And the problem is when you come back, if you want to come back to original Medicare and you want to get a Medicare supplement, you would then need to be medically approved. You'd have to go through medical underwriting to get a Medicare supplement plan. 
where if you choose original Medicare in the beginning, there's no questions asked. So you get one shot at having anything you want, then after that, you have to go through medical underwriting. If you're healthy, not a problem. If you've come into a medical issue, which is then when you'd find out, you know, if you have troubles with whatever plan you're on now, then it's more complicated to try and make a change. So keep that in mind as well. My philosophy has always been simple and easy. Choice is primary and to be able to do what you want when you want to do it uh, without having to ask permission is, is absolutely what I would do. Uh, there are special enrollment periods with Medicare Advantage plans. Again, this, this is all related to Medicare Advantage plans. Medicare supplement plans, you could change any time during the year. So if you get on a Medicare supplement plan and then all, all of a sudden there's a lower price, and again, you need to go through medical underwriting, but if you're healthy, you can change any time during the year. You do not have to wait till the end of the year. Matter of fact, it's much more complicated at the end of the year because there's so much going on but you can change in February or June. It really doesn't make any difference with a Medicare supplement. You have the freedom to do what you want to do again and keeps it easy. There are different Medicare supplement policies and obviously this is what I do is I make it super easy for you to figure out which one is the best one for you and then the best insurance company and the best price. And we want to keep it as affordable as absolutely possible. And they generally are, they're, they're generally in the $100, $120 range for a Medicare supplement policy, which gives you almost full coverage for the entire year. So it's absolutely fantastic, usually significantly better than what you've had previously for health insurance. And again, great benefits. And you go to any doctor, any hospital, anywhere in the country. But this is how I make my living is helping people with their Medicare supplement. But I help with all the other parts too, even though I don't make a living doing it. I help with figuring out everything that you need to do, including Medicare drug coverage. And this can be a little more complicated. We, it, it's really based on whatever medication you're currently taking. We have to tailor a plan to what you are currently taking. And if things change during the year, then we probably are gonna have to change plans at the end of the year to fit it to what you are currently taking at that point. So it's a little more uh, intensive in figuring out exactly what the right plan is, but we could absolutely do it with all we need is a list of your medications and then we can find the right plan to make it work for you. So again, you can change drug plans just like Medicare Advantage plans at the end of any year. Now, Part D late enrollment penalty. So this is a question I get a lot and it's a tough question. It's, it's if I don't currently take any prescription drugs, should I get a Medicare drug plan? And it really is a personal decision because if you don't get a drug plan now and you need one five years from now, there's a penalty because you didn't buy it now. And the penalty to me isn't so bad compared to the money you save premium by not buying a drug plan. So I have a video that goes over the penalty. If you want to see that video, just let me know and I'll send it to you. I don't have it public right now because I just don't want to sway anybody's opinion on whether to buy a drug plan or not a drug plan. You know, what I could tell you is personally myself, if I did not take prescription drugs, I would not buy a drug plan. And the important part is if you need one later and there's a penalty, you need to remember how much money you saved by not buying one for the years that you didn't need one. So, but I have a video that goes over all that. I have all the math, all the penalty information. So if you want that, just let me know and I'll, I'll send you that by email and you can take a look at that. But it's important to understand, should you buy one if you don't currently take prescription drugs? And again, some people sleep better at night, having things all locked up and buttoned up and all nothing to worry about, that's terrific too. So it's, it's a personal decision to figure that one out. Medicare does have plans that offer help for paying prescription drug costs or paying Part B premium, things like that. So if you have lower income, make sure you contact Medicare to ask for help on how to do that. And Medicare is usually pretty helpful. And you can reach Medicare at 1-800-MEDICARE, easy to remember. Good thing to know, they are open 24-7, I think every day. I don't even think they take Christmas off. But 
the point being, might be better to call 10 o'clock at night than 10 o'clock in the morning. And generally, you'll get somebody happy to talk to you if you call at night or early morning or whatever it may be. But they're generally very helpful. So if you need information like that, feel free to give them a call and they'd be happy to make sure they can do whatever they can for you. So that kind of gives us a pretty good overview of Medicare. And again, if you are choosing to stay with original Medicare and you want a Medicare supplement, it's as easy as possible to get a quote. You come to MedicareOnVideo.com, you fill out your basic information, we'll send you the information by email. And again, happy to walk you through it. And it doesn't cost anything to let us help you. So I, I certainly hope you'll allow us to help you. It's important for us to be able to help as many as we can. And obviously that's how I make my living. So if you found this helpful, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. You'll always have access to my videos when they come out and you'll get notification when new ones come out. And I do put them out pretty often, but the idea is to get you fully comfortable and educated with Medicare so that you can do anything that you need to do. So I hope you found this helpful and I hope you have a fantastic day. Medicare on video, Medicare on